Well, ready or not, the holiday season is continuing to unfold, and that means that we are also continuing our Advent journey to Christmas and moving right along with our four-part Sunday message series on Advent. And so in week one, uh, we had a guest speaker, a wonderful guest speaker, Michael Brundy, uh, and he talked about hope and what it means to have only positive expectations, H-O-P-E, having only positive expectations. Then last week, we explored the theme of peace and how you're going to need your inner peace plan. (laughs) You're going to need your inner peace plan. So let me just check in with you. Did anybody have the use for an inner peace plan this last week? Anybody? Like before maybe even got out of the sanctuary? (laughs) Well, that is the spiritual teaching, right? You always want to protect your peace because peace is the path, as Mahatma Gandhi said. There is no path to peace. Peace is the path. So this morning, we're going to spend some time with one of everybody's favorite topics, the third uh, theme of Advent, which is love. In my talk titled, Love is Trending. Now, if you're new to what's trending and what that means, the context in which I'm using it is to describe what's currently popular, right? Like what's on social media. For instance, um, in 2022, uh, and now that, you know, this year is coming to a close, we're starting to see some of the reports from different platforms about what was actually trending in 2022. Like in fashion, there was a desire for wider, looser pants. And that was pretty much at the top of everybody's list. And I mean, really, I mean, you know, who didn't see that coming, right? On the heels of a pandemic and lockdown. Um, And in other news, and I thought this was really interesting, Betty White was actually Googled more than Queen Elizabeth. And in another trending category of what you should really keep an eye on in 2023, cat toothpaste. Now, I know you think I'm kidding. I am not kidding. But it's had a five-year search growth of more than 53%. Mm -hmm. Cat toothpaste. Google it. Okay. Now, this week, uh, amongst uh, the ongoing trials and, and tribulations, and you hear me say, you know, the daily news is your prayer request, right? So, uh, in the ongoing uh, trials and tribulations out there, there were actually also some really good things that were trending in current events this week. Things like Senator. Raphael Warnock winning Georgia's Senate runoff race, my home state, hallelujah, Uh, things like uh, the WNBA and Olympic basketball star Brittany Griner finally being back home here in the state of Texas, reuniting with her wife after spending 294 days detained detained in Russia, and things like the Respect for Marriage Act, which is now well on its way to the president's desk so that he can sign it right into law after a bipartisan bipartisan effort in the United States Congress. So evidently, they do remember how to work together. Isn't that nice? That's encouraging. Um, but, you know, they voted to ensure federal protection of the right for every individual to marry who he or she loves. Amen? This is marriage equality, and, and it was long overdue. So there were some really cool things that were trending in uh, current events this week. Now, 
while all of these are incredibly informative and interesting and a blessing, you don't actually need a social media influencer on TikTok or on Instagram or YouTube or Facebook or the ever imploding Twitter uh, to tell you that love is always trending. Let's just say that together. Love is always trending. Now, you've probably heard this before in the Gospel of Mark. Our master teacher, our way shower Jesus, taught this. He said, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, and there is no other commandment greater than these. Now, here's the thing, right? You shall love your neighbor. Like, we get that part, right? Even if we don't do it, we understand it, right? But the more challenging part of this saying from Jesus is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And so that really points right to the question, do you? Do you love yourself? Now, please hear me. I am not talking about narcissism. I'm not talking about uh, selfishness. I'm not talking about arrogance. I'm talking about loving yourself. So do you love yourself? Do you respect yourself? Do you take good care of yourself and your body temple? Do you value your God-given life? Do you believe in yourself? And, and do you believe in yourself when you need to most, right? So I want to share a story with you. Uh, this particular story is called Acornology, um, and it was written by Maurice Nicole, and I think it was written sometime in the 50s. Once upon a time, in a land not so far away, there was a kingdom of acorns nestled at the foot of a grand old oak tree. Now, the citizens of this kingdom were very progressive, fully modernized acorns. And they went about their lives with a good and purposeful energy. And so because they were also baby boomer acorns, they engaged in a lot of self-help courses, right? So, for instance, they attended seminars like Getting All You Can Out of Your Shell, and Who Would You Be Without Your Nutty Story? And they went to woundedness groups, and they went to recovery groups for acorns who'd been bruised because of how they fell from the tree. Oh, and there were also spas for polishing up their shells with all kinds of acornopathic therapies to boost their longevity and well-being. One day, in the midst of this kingdom, there suddenly appeared a naughty, K-N-O-T-T-Y, a naughty little stranger who apparently had been dropped out of the blue by a passing bird. He was capless and dirty, and he made an immediate negative impression on the other acorns. And then to make things worse, he had the audacity to crouch at the bottom of the old oak tree. And he began stammering out a wild tale. He pointed up at the tree and he said, We are that. Well, the other acorns obviously knew that he was delusional, but one of them continued to engage in a conversation with this naughty little stranger. And he said, so, so tell us, I mean, how would we become that tree? Well, he said, pointing downward, it has something to do with going into the ground and cracking open our shells. That's insanity. Crack open our shells. That's totally morbid. Why, why then we wouldn't be acorns. And so in the land of acornology, even though they had been uh, given all those self-help courses and, you know, someone actually showed up and told them the truth of who they were, 
they could not believe that they had it in them to be an oak tree. They just couldn't believe it. They couldn't wrap themselves around that idea. They could not believe the very essence, the blueprint for their God-given life. They thought being an acorn was the end of their story. And the same is true for us. So if we don't truly love ourselves and know who we really are and believe in ourselves, we will never reach our our true potential, right? We'll never reach our oak tree potential. Are you with me? This is why it's been said, it's not who you are that holds you back. It's who you think you're not. Let me just say that again. It's not who you are that holds you back. It's who you think you're not. You know, in unity, uh, we teach that you may think that you have a lot of different problems, right? Like you may think that you have many different issues, but the truth, the capital T truth, is you only have one. And that one is your illusion of a sense of separation, separation from God. But you can never be separate from the source that created you. You can never be separate from God. Never. Now, I'd like for you to leave here today with this, with this divine idea. If you are ever feeling like you need to be saved by something, be saved from your sense of separation. That's what you want to be saved from. And here's why. The power that created you is always available within you as you to empower you. But you have to be willing to crack open your shell and get to the core so that you can realize, I am that. I'm that. That's what I was born to do. This is mine to do. You know, there's one person who knew a little something about this in our, uh, in our scriptures, and that's Mary, Mary, the mother of Jesus. And this brings us to the very essence of the Christmas story, because the essence of the Christmas story is the story of love. Now, if you grew up around church, you probably know this story. So I'm going to share it from Luke's gospel. Here's what, here's what scripture says. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a, a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and he said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. Well, she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor, David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, "Um, how can this be since I am a virgin? Now, I'm just going to hit the pause button here for, for just a sec because I want to be very clear that Mary is questioning this unimaginable story, and rightly, yes? Then the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. Gabriel goes on to say, for nothing is impossible for God. And then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be done according to your word. Hmm. Now, 
Whether you interpret this scripture literally or metaphysically, either way, this is the plot point. This is where Mary makes the decision and allows herself her version of, I am that. Do you get that? Yes? She's saying, I was born to do this. She's saying, I don't understand it, and I am scared, but I get it. So I'm going to go deep. I'm going to let my shell crack open, and I'm going to give birth to something greater than myself. This is mine to do, right? And so Mary is offering us one of the most valuable spiritual lessons here because even though Mary was perplexed and confused and good, I mean, who wouldn't be, right? Who wouldn't be? And by the way, just a sidebar here, how many of you are living an unimaginable life right now? Anybody? Am I talking to anybody today? Preaching to anybody today? Yes. So here's the thing, and please do not miss this. Mary was willing to believe that she could do something greater than herself and something more that she could even imagine for herself and for the world. In other words, Mary became pregnant with greater possibility, and this greater possibility is in each one of us. It's in you, boo, right? Regardless of your gender, this blueprint is in you. And Mary is showing us how to create that sacred space within ourselves for something greater to happen, for something greater to be birthed. Are you with me? And so it is with you. So the invitation of Advent is to think about a specific struggle perhaps you're having in in your life and ask yourself this question, am I willing to love myself enough? Am I willing to believe that God has something great for me to give to the world? Amen? Now, Unity co-founder Charles Fillmore wrote about it this way. He said, of all the attributes of God, love is undoubtedly the most beautiful. He said, love is the great harmonizer, love is the great healer, and love binds together the whole human family. Isn't that beautiful? And this is why there is no earthly problem that cannot be healed by love. But you cannot give what you do not have. So you must, according to Jesus, you must love yourself. That is the beginning of the creative process, right? That is the beginning of the creative process. And so, again, ask yourself, am I willing to love myself? Am I willing to believe that God has something greater for me to give birth to, to share with the world. And part two of this question is, are you willing to let love lead the way? Are you willing to let love lead the way? Because you may not have realized this yet, but it is you that is being born again. It's you that's being born again. Because here's the thing, God in you, as you, wants to birth something from you, something through you. That is where the transformation happens. Maybe it's a healing. Uh, Maybe it's a a special project of, of some kind. Maybe it's working with children. Maybe it's writing a book or writing a movie or writing a song or writing a play or writing a blog. Maybe it's a new business, right? Like maybe it's creating more love in a relationship. Maybe it's allowing, opening that door and allowing more financial abundance to just flow in in your life, right? 
whatever it is, God has something to be born through you to bring more light into the world. You are the light of the world, right? And it's something that you and only you can do in your own unique and unrepeatable way. Now is the time for you to do this. Now, certainly you have heard me say, we did not come this far through this pandemic to not transform. We must. We must, right? Again, the daily news is your prayer request. And so, your heart work this week is to take a note from uh, the acornology story that I shared with you. Don't be like the ones who thought that being an acorn was the end of their story because it is not. There's so much more to you. There's so much more to your life. You know, later on in the Christmas story, Mary and Joseph are told that there is no room in the inn. But their story didn't end there, and neither does yours. But let's don't get ahead of ourselves, right? So (laughs) I want to leave you with this. The greatest power in the universe is love. Love is the greatest power in the universe. It is always trending. So like it, share it, subscribe to it, and let it go viral in your life and out into the world. And so ends our message for today. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.